discussion today. Let us know where you are viewing from. We always love to see that and uh, so that we can acknowledge just who's with us and where you're at statewide, nationally. And uh, we, we appreciate you doing that uh, in the chat box. We'll give you a shout out as well. So we want you to realize that, um, here we go. Um, the agenda for today includes the welcome success story, our main presentation. We will be sharing some job leads and we will have some partner uh, updates as well as telling us what's going to be taking place next time at Job Club. All right, um, the mission of Job Club is to provide a positive environment for job seekers who want to and need to network and learn best practices for the job search. We meet on the second and fourth Tuesdays of each month, and you can find a schedule of topics at www.ukalumni.net. So we'll refer to that, that uh, website many times because there's a wealth of information there and it keeps you updated uh, in the interim between the times that we meet. Okay, I'm kind of stuck here on the, I don't know why this is uh, frozen a little bit here. Wait a minute, there we go. Job Club is currently hosted in a hybrid format. And that means that we're in person in the Fayette County Extension Office. And we, again, welcome everybody that's joining us um, in person. We're also on Zoom webinar. And that means that we have a chat moderator available for your questions and your comments. So please utilize that. And we're also available on Facebook Live. And that is view only. We do not have a chat moderator or a job lead newsletter. Review our free Job Club resource packet online. And again, we just refer you there because it has information um, that might be relative to any particular uh, stage of your job search that you might be in. And that means that uh, we have questions and answers. We have, uh, so we have job lead opportunities, um, articles of interest, uh, resume review, checklist, just, just a bounty of materials. So make sure you know or are aware of where that's located. We encourage you to join the Central Kentucky Job club sharing community on LinkedIn. Um, this is our way to continue to be united um, uh, as a whole, as a group of, of job searchers and those of us who are trying to help you. So um, that's a great way to learn about uh, job leads that may have come to us, have a short uh, timeline, and uh, you can make, be able to take action uh, before we meet again. We want to remind you that employers and recruiters welcome at Job Club. So we invite you to come and share your job leads. We give you a one minute <clears throat> spotlight. And so that would be something that you can do either in person here at the Fayette County Extension Office, or you could do it virtually online. Watch your email later today for job leads that have been already presented, sent to us, and that will be included in our job club email later this afternoon. It's crazy. I don't know why we're kind of freezing up here today. Okay. You want to do the got it down there? Is it on there? You did? Okay. It's just not reacting up here. Okay. 
just one. We're sorry for the technical difficulties here. We have something that's stopped our slides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have someone here just a second. There we go. <clears throat> we'll still. Yep. Some attendees are conducting a confidential job search. And that means that we need to be uh, very respectful of their privacy for the job search of others. So that anything that's said in here, it stays in here, um, as well as our comments in the chat box. We want you to check out our job search related articles that are included in our job club reminder emails. One of the most frequent questions that is, uh, is asked is that, do we have past recordings of past sessions? And yes, we do. And they are found at www ukalumni.net slash job club. So you can find recordings of the past that um, will benefit you on any particular topic. And uh, typically we have multiple presenters on a topic so that you can compare uh, different perspectives on those subjects. <clears throat> <clears throat> so we want to welcome our first timers. Um, we do we have any first timers here that are in person? <laughs> welcome, yes, we do, and uh, we will be able to talk a little bit uh, more in depth with you following our meeting, which is always a benefit to coming in person because we do have a wonderful networking uh, opportunity at the conclusion of our presentation. If you are a first timer online, then uh, please indicate that in the chat box so that we can just you know reach out to you as well and, uh, and, and share our enthusiasm that you've joined us today. Uh, remind first timers that you will receive a follow-up survey later today. And this feedback was going to place in system so that we can um, tell you of a, of a future programming, give you advance notice of, of opportunities. So uh, that newsletter will come along in that short survey. And if you will just fill that out online, get it back to us, then uh, we will um, we'll get you all in our system. Success stories. It's time for success stories. And uh, do we have any that would like to share in our audience today? Anybody that's made, we do. We have a success story. So we're going to, just one second, we're going we're gonna to let you share with everyone. I'll share, but I did have an interview yesterday for a position, a sales position. And uh, I should find out sometime this afternoon or tomorrow whether I moved on or not. Whoa! Great news, great news. We'll be thinking about you uh, as, we, as we go through the day. And again, a, a, an example, you know, he, has, he doesn't know whether he has attained this particular job yet, but it is a success in the right direction. Um, you know, today's presentation is on networking. So success might be that you've reached out to someone um, and, and made some contact from your previous employment that will help you um, in getting some references or job leads. Uh, just there are multiple ways that we define successes. And we want you to be assured that that leads to positive thinking, positive actions, and um, hopefully a positive um, journey in your job search. <clears throat> Well, do let us know the progress and if and when you get that job um, or you have an interview coming up, just shoot us, shoot us a message on that so that we are aware of that and can follow you in your journey. 
Today's guest speaker is no stranger. We're just thrilled that uh, Caroline shares her expertise from time to time. And uh, this is such a this is such an important uh, subject that I know Caroline emphasizes over and over and over again the importance of who you know, and it still is such an important um, component of, of, of attaining a job. And so she's going to share her her wonderful experience and, and advice on uh, how to expand that network. Uh, Caroline is the director of the University of Kentucky Alumni Career Services Program and is a certified professional retirement coach, a certified career counselor, a certified career services provider, global career development facilitator, board certified coach, and Gallup certified strengths coach with over 25 years of experience. So uh, that, that I could stop there and say that we're in good hands today. Caroline has a passion for helping clients. First, discover their strengths. Second, figure out what they want to do when they grow up. And third, successfully make their next step on their career life journey. Her work with Encore Career Clients and helping professionals make successful retirement lifestyle transitions is becoming even more popular. Additionally, she develops care career-related programming, delivers keynotes and workshops, and writes regular columns for the UK Alumni Magazine. In 2013, she co-founded the Central Kentucky Job Club, which is still going strong. Caroline has a BS, a BBA from the University of Kentucky, and is a proud life member of the UK Alumni Association. Caroline, take it away. Good morning, everyone, both Zoom and in person. It's great to see everyone today, and thank you for joining us. So how many of you have ever been formally taught how to network? Not many hands are going up here in the audience. I'm assuming probably not many folks at home have been taught how to network either. I think it's one of those things that we should be taught in that Life 101 class, starting in middle school, high school, and college, you know, how to balance the checkbook, how to do some basic home and auto repair, basic communication skills, how to build resilience. In that class, that Life 101 class, how to network, I feel, needs to be taught because it's such a basic and important part of life. So today, I'm going to simplify networking for you and give you a magic formula. So please grab a pen and paper and get ready to take some notes. I'll give you some homework and some strategies. And at the end, I'll give you that magic networking formula. So to begin with, my 20, if I could tell my 21-year-old self some great advice, this is what I would have told my 21-year-old self, or I wish somebody would have told me when I was 21, that to invest the time and energy throughout your life, Caroline, building, nurturing, and maintaining your network. That's the best advice you can give a 21-year-old or even younger. Spend the time nurturing, building, and maintaining your network. It is the best insurance policy you will have in your life. So important, so important. So what is the actual definition of networking? I'll give you a formal definition, and then I'll tell you what I think it is. Um, the definition of networking is the action or process of interacting with others to exchange information and develop professional or social contacts. So that makes sense. But what I think networking is, is simply talking to people and finding something in common. So people in life get nervous when they hear the word networking 
or they may shy away from a networking event. But in reality, we're all networking anytime we talk to people or share information or try to find something in common, whether it's formal or informal, we're all really networking every day and probably just don't realize it. In the chat box, I'd like for the audience to share what are some benefits that come to mind of networking? So why do people network and what are some benefits? Load that chat box with what comes to mind. I'll give you a few minutes to share your thoughts on that. And we'll also hear from our in-person audience as well. What are some benefits of networking? There's some obvious ones, and then there's some not so obvious ones. Online, it says you never know who your contacts may know and building a database of resources to reach out to. Good. From our in-person audience, who'd like to share some benefits of networking? Keep them coming in that. Chat that's box. On, a, on a similar note, but I mean, the most obvious thing that comes to mind is a uh, potential reference for a job application. Excellent. Number one in my mind. Especially in the job search, we can rely upon our network or people we may have worked for or known through the years for a future reference. Online, we also have connections to job leads, word of mouth job opportunities, and learning from others. You don't know what you might what might help you in the future, not just today. Great. Another one from the audience. These are great. Keep on coming. Uh, adding to the references, it's, it's not necessarily a, a benefit to you. You, you. you may be able to help one of your connections as well. Right. It Paying jobs. it forward. It's a real theme of networking. Paying it forward. Additional benefits of networking, or it can help us advance our career. Um, it can help us with brainstorming and problem solving in life. Um, it can help raise our professional profile. Uh, it can help us grow our personal brand, help us have access to people and opportunities that we may not have had on our own. It can help build our confidence. Um, we can become smarter by the people we know or the people we get to know. It can increase our knowledge base. Um, we can find mentors um, or sponsors through networking and obviously generating job leads or hearing about job opportunities is another benefit of networking. Caroline, I think another thing I would add is it can help broaden uh, one's perspective and you learn new things. Excellent. To broaden your perspective and learn new things. Thank you, Lou. Good, good addition to the many benefits of networking. So we can't talk about networking without talking about first impressions and how important that is in life um, when we're out and about or conducting uh, networking um, engagement opportunities. So we never get the second chance to make the first impression. So with, let's control what we can. So today I'm also going to share some tips on how to make a better first impression. Uh, many of us have had inherent bias or microaggression training that has helped us be more aware perhaps of our um, judgments that may be going on in our mind um, that we're not conscious of. There's a term I ran across recently that I wanted to share with you. It's called thin slicing. And what thin slicing is, is we take a mental snapshot 
Um, when we meet someone for the first time and guess, or we intuitively jump to conclusions about how smart we think they are, um, how confident they are, um, whether we can trust them or not. And part of that goes back to it's a survival technique um, from you know, back to prehistoric times when we make these judgments, but people do jump to conclusions rightfully wrong or wrongfully about people when we first meet them. So several years ago in Job Club, when we first started Job Club, we realized that there were some people that were having a little bit harder time getting a job. And, you know, it's one of those things nobody wants to talk about, but the elephant in the room is likability. And some people just present more likable than others. And we started doing a little more research and there actually is a really good book and there's a lot of information out there on how to be more likable. Uh, one of our favorite resources uh, is a Tim Sanders book. And Tim Sanders wrote The Likeability Factor Great book, The Likeability Factor. We all can learn from his research. And there's also a, an online assessment that if you Google the L factor assessment, it'll probably come up with a few simple questions to ask yourself uh, and see how likable you may be. And what his research found and other researches uh, supported this is that People tend to gravitate toward others that they feel they can trust, people that come across as friendly, generous, and kind. So those things your mother taught you, your parents taught you in kindergarten, these are the things that still, uh, as an adult, help people like you more. Um, also, it's no secret that likable people tend to advance further in their career Likeable people, trustworthy people, they're the ones that we want to buy from. They're the ones that we want to marry. They're the ones that we want to hang out with. And obviously, they're the ones we want to work with and hire. And Tim found he broke it down into four categories of likability. And I, I love how he breaks it down and makes it so simple with great takeaways. The first category of likability he found was just simple friendliness. And it doesn't matter if you're extroverted or introverted, there's simple things we can do to come across as being friendlier. For instance, we can smile at people. We can use good eye contact have open body uh, stance versus the closed body stance. Um, simple little things. We can greet people by name. We can use their name in conversation. So it comes down to communication and openness to others is that first category of friendliness. His second category he found in likability was relevance. So relevance is a second category. And what he meant by that or what the research found is it's your ability to connect with others, um, with their interests, their wants, their needs. So are you a good listener? Do you know what are other people's goals? Who are some of the people in your network? What kind of career aspirations or personal goals do they have? Have you asked them or listened to their um, aspirations? So the second category is relevance and being able to connect with others and knowing what their interests and goals are in life. Can you ask good thoughtful questions to maybe pull that out of people if it doesn't come up in natural conversation? Third category of likability is empathy. Your ability to recognize and acknowledge the experience of other people, being able to walk in their shoes if they're having a hard time or if you can just tell by the expression on their face, this is a bad day for them, acknowledging that. So having some empathy toward others, and we all know the last three or four years have been hard. They have been really hard years. And let's just give people some grace and 
empathize with what may be going on with people in their lives. We never know when they're dealing with a major sickness, um, other issues. So have a little empathy. The fourth category of likability is realness. So how authentic you come across. Um, are you consistent? And also, are you vulnerable too? Do you share with people uh, the side that they may not see at the business meeting? So these four categories of likability, I challenge you to think about them as you're networking, as you're talking to your friends, your coworkers, people at church, or in your various community activities. Are you presenting as friendly? And if not, remember just to smile, say people's name. Are you showing up as being relevant? Are you exhibiting empathy? And are you coming across as being real? Loved his research, and I think you'll enjoy that book. Now, the father of networking is Dale Carnegie. Many of you have heard of the Dale Carnegie Leadership Courses. Fabulous training. You don't hear about it as much as you used to, but the principles are still sound principles. Famous book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, still has so many relevant tips and strategies for basic communication in life. In the day, executives or people that were high potential or wanted to grow in their career track would invest in a Dale Carnegie course where many things were taught that would help you be more successful in your careers. And a huge part of that was simple networking. Dale Carnegie has a fascinating story. He was born in the late 1800s in rural Missouri on a farm. In high school, he joined the debate team and really became interested in debate and public speaking. He was able to leave the farm and go to college. And when he graduated from college, his first job was in Oklahoma. He sold correspondence courses to cattle farmers all over Oklahoma. He was pretty successful at that and quickly got a job with Arm & Hammer, selling bacon and lard and other supplies all over Oklahoma. And within a few years, he was one of Arm & Hammer's top salespeople in the nation. But he still had a personal desire to be a Chautauqua lecturer. He had teaching in his bones. So he moved to New York in the early 19 teens, lived at the Y. And while he was trying to figure out how to support himself in New York, he took some classes, some acting classes, and he approached the manager of the Y and said, could I teach a public speaking class here at the Y? But I want 80% of the proceeds of this class. This was something that hadn't really been done before. So they agreed to it. And from the very first offering, those classes were full. So he knew he was onto something as more and more people wanted to gain their confidence in public speaking. So he started putting together learning materials and handouts. Eventually he did go on to serve in the war and came back and gave a talk on the topic at Carnegie Hall that sold out. And from there, he started writing books and developing leadership courses. So he's the father, really, of networking. Great material. If you have a chance to pick up one of his books, I'd recommend How to Win Friends and Influence People. A lot of great principles. So now to some basics. How do you actually network? Again, this is something I wish somebody would have taught me how to do growing up. I didn't have a lot of professional people in my life, so I didn't have a lot of role models to, on how to do this. So it was very uncomfortable for me when I was starting my career, putting myself out there and shaking hands and introducing myself. That, that took some time to get comfortable doing. 
So here are some basics. And when I used to teach in the College of Ag um, students, we always practice this. It seemed very simple, but it's something that we're not formally taught. When you introduce yourself to someone, always stand to introduce yourself. It just shows respect. If you're sitting at a table and shake somebody's hand, it's not as impactful as standing up. There was a picture in the newspaper years ago of a very famous UK football player shaking hands with the governor and the football player was sitting down. The governor was standing up. You can imagine the editorials that came in after that big picture was in the newspaper about how disrespectful it was that the football player didn't stand to shake hands. So please always stand up. It just shows an extra level of respect when you shake someone's hand. Thankfully, we're a little post COVID now and people are more comfortable shaking hands. So if, if you're comfortable shaking hands post COVID, please go right ahead and do it. Um, when you extend your hand, please make sure it's a good firm handshake, not a fish handshake. Look them in the eye and say your a greeting and then your name. Hi, my name is Caroline Francis. So nice to meet you. So a greeting, your name slowly so they can remember it and then some form of pleasantry about meeting them. Simple, that is a simple formula. They will reciprocate, if not, and you could just say, I'm sorry, what is your name? I'm not sure we've met. Then they will ideally take the social cue and share their name. If you're like me and I have a little trouble remembering names, there are some strategies to help remember names. And this is Dale Carnegie's book gives a ton of strategies to help remember people's names. But the easiest is just to repeat their name. So if they say their name is Jim Smith, Jim, it is so nice to meet you. Repeat their name a couple of times in your exchange with them. If, you, if they don't have a name tag on and you can't quite hear what their name is, simply say, could you spell that for me? And then repeat it after they spell it. If you have an unusual name, or something that would help people remember your name, say it as part of your introduction. What I say is, my name is Caroline Francis, like the Pope, Pope Francis is my last name. So help people give them a little um, something to remember your name by. Many other good strategies that you can pick up by just doing a Google search um, or doing some additional reading on how to remember people's names. Also in networking, your next strategy after simply sharing your name is to try to find something in common. Find something with common in common with people and it'll make the bond a lot quicker. So a goal would be to how quickly can you find a two or three things in common? And in large groups, a great net networking exercise that I've done in presentations with larger groups is to have the group go meet three strangers in the room and find how quickly you can find three things that your group of people have in common uh, for the exercise. So this works on a plane. This works anytime you're meeting somebody for the first time, just engaging in conversation. Oh, where did you grow up? Ah, what are some of your hobbies? Have you read any good books lately? What movies would you recommend that I put on my Netflix queue? These are all simple conversation starters to help you build a bond with someone. I love the six degrees of freedom exercises. Um, for instance, when you're on the plane or you meet somebody randomly, how quickly can you find a connection 
um, to that person or where they're from. The world is a lot smaller than we realize. And those are just fun stories to hear. Um, you'll never believe I was on a plane to California and met somebody from Oklahoma that used to go to UK and we had the same professor. And so we talked the whole way there about you know, Economics 101. These are just great small world experiences that help build a bond with someone and help that uh, beginning um, networking um, from a stranger to a friend. Now there are some tools these days to help with networking. And the best one I can think of is LinkedIn. Everyone needs to be on LinkedIn. I'm hearing some bravos from the audience on how LinkedIn is your friend when it comes to networking. LinkedIn has been a game changer. Uh, 25, 30 years ago, when I started in this business, I had my trusty little Rolodex. I was slowly trying to build with business cards. But, you know, that was pretty regional to people I would meet face to face. And then you'd lose contact when people change jobs because all that information became outdated. LinkedIn is a game changer. LinkedIn suggests people you might know. Uh, it makes it so easy to follow up from a recent or brand new introduction to somebody. When you're having that first time exchange with someone and after you found a couple of things in common, I always say, may I reach out to you with a LinkedIn connection or let's connect on LinkedIn and then quickly do that while you're still fresh in their mind. Send them a little note on the LinkedIn request re referencing how you met. So nice to meet you today at the Bible study. Hope to see you in the future. If I can ever do anything to help you, don't hesitate to reach out. Another way to end that conversation when you're meeting somebody is to always end with that. If I can ever do anything to help you, please don't hesitate to reach out. Then you leave the door open for people to follow up with you later. Uh, helps again with that likability, authentic and friendly factor when you're making new connections. It just makes it where people feel like, you know, I think I, think I could reach out to that person and ask for a favor. I noticed on LinkedIn, they have a second degree connection with someone at this company I'm trying to get on with. So be strategic on using LinkedIn, uh, not just your first degree connections, but who your friends know. Uh, it's perfectly acceptable to reach out to someone, even if you don't know them, uh, or have a friend do an introduction for you either via email or LinkedIn. But LinkedIn is your friend, a great resource we all need to be using more. Successful networkers, they have some things in common. Successful networkers know how to pay it forward. In the chat box, I'd like for you to share with me something that you have noticed that successful networkers do. People in your, in your contact list, people that you know that you feel are good at networking or have a large network, what, what do they do? What about that person do you think lends toward a strong network? We'll have some response from our chat box and then also our live audience. I know you all have some great feedback on that as well. Just a minute to share. What do successful networkers do? Or what characteristics do they have? Lou, would you like to share a little on that? I'm gonna have two of our in-person audience. We're gonna bring you the microphone. Um, we have some wonderful 
resources here in the room today. So please share. Yeah, um, I guess one thing that stands out to me is like, um, like you, you talked about it where you meet someone and you find a connection, like, you know, you have a good conversation. But what really stands out to me is then like later, next time you see them, when that person like follows up on the conversation, it, it shows that they actually like cared about your personal interest. So to me, that stands out the most. So somebody that knows how to follow up on something in that conversation. I always have great respect for people when we'll chat it on something. And before I get home, there's something in my email box, a link to an article uh, or something that they share with me. I just, I just have much greater respect instantly when somebody does that. Caroline, respect is a key word. If you show somebody respect, you are paying them a huge compliment and to find somebody in a in a position of authority um, or ownership uh, that you can uh, gain information from or connection with is really uh, helpful i use an example of uh, our, the market cancer center uh, as we were growing and developing, uh, occasionally people would get an appointment and say, can you tell me more? I, I want to apply for a position in the, in the cancer center, or they would apply for a particular position. And they would say, uh, if they didn't get the job, they wanted to stay in the queue for other jobs that would come up. But even, even if they didn't get that job, there were several times when uh, we looked for them for other jobs. Uh, but, but to have them uh, have enough interest and respect to come and place themselves basically on the altar of, <laughs> of uh, employment at that particular institution or, uh, was really uh, important for us to learn who they were and how much they had respect for. So keeping in touch keeping when in maybe touch, you're yeah. not um, the first person um, offered the job or you do not get the job, keeping in touch because I've seen that happen more than I realized would happen. Um, they'll let you know potentially about future opportunities. Great, any others? Couple online um, sharing their successes and moments of difficulties and stay in contact periodically, even if it's just a note and making sure to hello if you see them somewhere, even if it's been a long time or only met once before, just a quick hello, how are you doing? For homework, everybody get their pen and paper ready for homework. I'd like for you to look on your LinkedIn connection list. Find five people you have not been in touch with for the last year. Reach out to them with a note. Haven't heard from you for a while. Just wanted to check in and see how things are going. Any summer travel plans? Would love to connect for coffee. So your homework is to find five people on LinkedIn. I've studied people in various positions through the years and watched how people network. And some people are more comfortable networking one-on-one -on -one and are strategic. Being strategic is something my 21-year-old self did not realize. So very intentionally scheduling two or three coffee meetings a month. These mount up over time. If you're going to lunch somewhere anyway, see who can join you. Send an email out to people that might work in that area. If you're going to a conference, prepare in advance. Find people who might be going to that conference and see if you can schedule a meetup for dinner. So being more strategic on our networking, double dipping on, on our time. If we're going to be doing something anyway, if we're going to a concert or a lecture or something free, an art gallery exhibit, who can we ask to join us? These are just little things that strengthen relationship and help other people see that they're a valued friend. Other ways you can pay it forward that will help strengthen your network and your friendships. Let me talk a bit about friendships. 
I have developed some of my best friends in life from being complete strangers that I've met through networking. Uh, so they make life sweeter. Networking makes life sweeter. But share an article. Again, invite people to coffee. Share in other people's success. If you notice on LinkedIn, they've had a promotion or if their name has been mentioned in an article, reach out. Either send them a LinkedIn congrats or even sending a good old fashioned card. People love getting mail. So let them know that you recognized their success and celebrate with them. Another way is to nominate people for awards. Anytime you learn about an award, think, who can I nominate for that award? It might take a little bit of time, but it's really appreciated and they will value that for life. And who knows, they may get the award, but either way, they're being recognized for their hard work and efforts. So there are lots of ways we can pay it forward. And one of those is introducing people to each other. I received an email yesterday from someone I know from being a Commerce Lexington ambassador. She did a email introduction and introduced me to someone her, in her network who was looking to hire some people in Lexington. I really appreciated that. So I immediately went on LinkedIn, connected with that person with a note. I so appreciated Jennifer connecting us would love to schedule a Zoom or a coffee more to meet you and to hear about your job openings. Now, let's talk about this magic formula. At the very beginning, I shared with you that a magic formula was to come later in the presentation. Here's the magic networking formula. About 15 years ago, I was asked to do a keynote at a large women's event on networking before the speed networking portion. And I got a question that took me a little bit off guard. So this is what drove the creation of my formula. Someone wanted a number. In the audience, they said, can you give me a number on how many times I should be networking a month? Well, ideally we do it organically and it's just part of our day. But these are three areas that I recommend that you network in each month. More, preferably, but at least each month. First, somehow network in your profession, industry, or company. Okay? Maybe you have a professional association that has a monthly meeting. Start going to those meetings. Get involved. You'll meet people outside of your company. Within your company or organization, get out of your department. Find ways to meet people outside of your building or your department or your location. It's going to make uh, you stand out a little more. You're going to learn a lot about the company. Who knows? They might be fabulous future references for you. Next is your community. Find ways to network in your community. It may be through the Rotary or Kiwanis. Perhaps it's through a church group, a volunteer organization. Maybe you serve meals at the homeless shelter or you work on a habitat project every fall with a group of people. Find a way to get involved in your community and give back to your community. When I first started in this field, I really thought all networking needed to be through your professional association. But after 30 years of doing this type of work, I always ask people, how did you find your job? Huge percent of them, probably 80% of people still find their jobs through networking and direct contact with the company. So that means you do not need to be spending all your job search time on a job board. Please spend more and more time away from your computer, out of your office, out of your house, get out and about in the, in the community. I've heard just as many people land a job lead at the soccer field where their kids are playing or in Bible study or volunteering on a habitat build as I have at professional associations. So please just get involved in your community so that people know you, they get to know your reputation, 
your transferable skills. And lastly, we got to have fun in life. Hobbies. Hobbies are another wonderful way to network and have fun. Is it a book club? Do you take a class at the Carnegie Center? Are you in the Sarah Club? Do you take hikes? Uh, maybe you're into Frisbee golf. Have something that you enjoy doing and do it on a regular basis. These are powerful connections. I've heard of so many people through the years getting asked to join boards because of someone they met through either community project or a hobby. These are fabulous ways for people to get to know you. So that's the magic formula. Please start incorporating that into your monthly um, schedule, ideally more frequently in it. Ideally will even come just naturally, you do it weekly or daily and not even realize it. Let's talk a bit about the power of weak links. Fascinating study came out in 1973 on the power of weak links. When we're especially in a job search mode or gearing up for it, we think, who do I know that has the most influence with big companies and leaders in this town? Or who do I know that has 5,000 LinkedIn connections? We immediately think of those folks and not so much our second degree connections. The research continues to show the power of our second and third degree connections. There was a replication of that study, a more um, technology-driven replication of that study that MIT did over five years um, from, nine, from 2015 to 2020. They looked at LinkedIn and people you may know. So they studied second degree connections on LinkedIn and they found that it's the second degree connections or the people that you know where you have less than 10 mutual connections that pan out into the job offers or the more successful um, network sharing. So please think beyond your immediate connections. Um, the theory on that is the people that are closest to you, you already know probably what they know um, they know you, they know you're looking, you've already exhausted their contacts. Um, now we need to go a little bit deeper. Uh, a, a great example is, um, I hear stories like this all the time where someone gets their job from a neighbor of their grandmother that they barely know. So it's, the, it's those weaker links that you don't immediately think, oh my gosh, that person has a nephew or a grandson that um, shared a lead with me or she got a coffee conversation um, but, um, between the two people and it worked out into a successful lead. So I encourage you to really spend time developing more connections, deeper connections with people that you may only loosely know or not know that well yet. Great research on that. Networking for introverts, there's some fabulous books out there. There's one called Quiet. Lots of great articles. If you just Google link, if you just Google networking for introverts, you will find so many wonderful strategies um, if you consider yourself more introverted. Um, often you are some of the best networkers. Uh, introverted people, um, they are more strategic often, better listeners, good to follow up. So if you're introverted, that's no excuse for not having a good, strong network. Um, you can be a fabulous networker uh, if you're an introverted. That's, that's no excuse. There are lots of tips and strategies if you're preparing to go to a networking conference. Um, many of those are prepping in advance, finding people on LinkedIn, offering to help with registration, um, good use of name tags. When you go to new events uh, or new meetings, try to sit with people you don't know. 
that's another good way to put you out of your comfort zone a bit, but to meet new people. Another networking strategy is to be thinking about your own personal board of directors. Who are some people that you could include more in your inner circle at your table? They may not even know that you consider them a mentor or a sponsor. But be strategic and think, who in my network could I really consider and spend more time with as a mentor? Lastly, I'd like to share the power of a thank you note. In life, karma is real. And the more gratitude we can show for people, acts that they've done for us, time they've taken out to make an introduction for us, it's just going to come back to help you over and over. Please invest in a box of thank you notes. Start using those to let people know how much you appreciate them. Thank them when they do things for you. The good old fashioned thank you note is still very much in style and a great tool to help you advance in life and build your network. At this time, we are going to share job leads. Also, there is a networking event here in Lexington coming up in a week or so that we're gonna put information in the chat box. Commerce Lexington has a business links networking event. They have graciously offered to comp job club attendees to attend this networking event. You do need to send me an email so that I can get you on the registration list, uh, but look in the chat box for that upcoming networking event here in Lexington, um, compliments of Commerce Lexington for our job club attendees. Thank you so much. Feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Be sure and reference uh, how we may know each other uh, if we've not had the pleasure of meeting before. And I hope that you all use what we've talked about today to help nurture, build, grow, and maintain your personal network. All righty, let's get Carol another hand. That was so good. That was good. That was great. So, um, uh, once again, I'm Nicole. Wait, I'm um, here, part of Job Club here, and uh, I'm just I have so many notes. <laughs> this was a great presentation, Carolyn. I loved uh, 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 just speaking about networking, and it made me think about informational interviewing, uh, something that my daughters who are fresh out of college that they like to do, and something that she actually got here from Job Club. So um, thank you very much for that. All righty, so let's see here where we are now. So our alumni career services, as Carolyn was speaking about, reaching out to her um, if you have additional questions or, um, or to alumni services uh, for some additional one-on-one -on -one where they uh, will talk with you about, well, sorry, cover letters, resume writing, uh, interview preparation, et cetera. So be sure to use that resource. All righty, and do we have any other questions for Carolyn? Any other questions at all? Okay, all righty. Okay, so who's hiring? Do we have any employers in the audience today before I speak? Any employers that would like to speak? Okay. Alrighty, great. So do we happen to have any employers in the chat that would like to list any, you feel free um, to list any job openings there. And of course you can follow up with us also with any job leads that you may have. Anyone in the chat? Okay. Alrighty, so um, employers, of course, you can email the job, those job leads by 12 p.m. today. Uh, at jobclub.uky.edu, and we'll include them, uh, post our meeting um, in the newsletter that goes out to all attendees and past attendees. All right, job, uh, job club facilitators, news and programs. Of course, we have our 
Fayette County Extension Office, uh, Corporate Extension Office. Uh, where there are many family resources, 4-H development, horticulture, um, and also you can be on the email list for this as well for different programs. It's a great way to kind of get creative and uh, have some, uh, I shouldn't say networking, but have some quality time with your family, your children, or just simply networking, learning uh, new skills and meeting new people. Alrighty, and I myself, I'm going to speak about a few updates from SEPS. Once again, I'm Nicole Waite, and I am a, an employment specialist here at the University of Kentucky. I work directly in employment with SEPS. SEPS is temporary employment within the University of Kentucky. Uh, we are not a different part of the university. I like to um, make that note. Uh, SEPS is a very great way to get your foot in the door with the University of Kentucky. So SEPS offers both full-time and part-time positions. Um, in any position that you do work in in a full-time capacity, you will qualify for medical, dental, and vision insurance. And that's something that a lot of people do not know. And I like to point out that there are benefits uh, besides, uh, of course, the benefit of networking, skills development, uh, meeting new people. We actually have those benefits as well. And so a few jobs that I like to highlight today, we have, a, actually, we have three jobs in our HR, within our HR department that we're going to highlight today. Uh, and there are many more, but there are just three that I'm going to highlight, and that is a benefits customer service associate, um, of course, in our benefits office. And then we have a steps HR customer service associate, and this one, uh, this position in particular will help with our new hires, um, applicants, employment team, um, different, uh, let's see here just different departments across the university, onboarding paperwork, et cetera. This particular position, many of the people within our HR department have been in, especially when getting started, they've been in this position and you're like the face. Uh, you meet so many people and um, a lot of the people, as you say in this, uh, or employees in this position have transitioned into different departments within HR. They'll start here and then they'll just go on and grow into different positions within HR or even outside of HR. But it's a great way to learn about um, human resources here at the University of Kentucky. Uh, and let's see here, there was another one that's an administrative associate position also. So, and those positions will be listed in that newsletter today that we were talking about. And of course, uh, anyone that's here in person today, you can ask those, ask me about those also after um, Job Club today. But for those attendees, I don't want to be selfish, we will have those links sent out to you. Alrighty, and so we've already talked about alumni services. Okay, so next time at Job Club, which will be on June 27th, we're preparing a uh, preparing a federal resume. Okay, and that's going to be presented by Ken Watcher, I believe it is, volunteer job coach, of Northern Kentucky Accountability Group, in Kitten County Library. So um, be sure to register for that event at www.ukalumni.net slash job club. Or of course, there's a barcode uh, there that you could go ahead and and scan and begin registering for that. And again, this information will also be in the newsletter that will be pushed out today. So once again, thank you all for joining us today at Job Club. Thank you for our live audience and our attendees online. Thank you, Carolyn, you've done such a great job. I have some more notes myself. I am forever a student, I always tell people that. So uh, thank you again, everyone, and we'll see you next time at Job Club.